morning, beloveds. This is a face of someone who has stayed up too late. <laughs> uh, we watched Godzilla last night, the one from the, what, mid-2000s, um, which was a surprisingly good movie. Uh, not generally watch. I love science fiction, but I don't generally watch monster movies. Um, but it was really good. And then uh, it got over in time for us to watch the cold opening for Saturday Night Live. And then we ended up watching the whole Saturday Night Live. So I went to bed too late. <laughs> On top of getting up a little extra early to go for a run in the park. And so I'm not awake yet. I also realized that I downloaded yesterday's video last night, but never uploaded it to the YouTube channel. So I was just like, okay. So I got up and did that. And um, yeah, so I'm just not quite clicking on all cylinders yet this morning, which is okay. It's okay. Uh, and Gabby is sitting next to me, so if you hear this really squeaky, rumbling sound underneath uh, me, that's Gabby. Little orange tabby. The Part of the reason why she's named Gabby is she has a lot to say. She talks a lot. All right. Uh, it is February 7th. Uh, our title is I Contemplate the Presence. And the Bible quote is, Pray without ceasing. And that is from 1 Thessalonians 2.17. It doesn't matter what we call it, so long as we remember that it is, that there is a secret place of the Most High within us, and that we may consciously enter it by merely knowing that we are already there. This is the place where the universe meets us in its wholeness without any restriction whatsoever. This is the place where the all delivers everything that it is to us. Anything that helps you enter here is good. If you say prayers, make affirmations, repeat beautiful passages, or just sit in quiet contemplation of your thoughts, realizing the presence of life you do you will do well for all of those methods lead to the conclusion that the power exists and is available all life all health all love all peace exist in this power our loneliness our sense of isolation our poverty our doubt and our sickness results from being disconnected in consciousness from this divine self I let go of every inharmonious, limiting thought. I quietly turn within and acknowledge that inner presence of my own being. Beautiful, uplifting feelings of harmony, peace, and love flow through me like a river, elevating my consciousness to a new and higher level of acceptance and unity. All right. Um... I've referenced the class uh, Practical Mysticism before, um, and in Practical Mysticism, one of the books we use, and if, if I had thought about this beforehand, <laughs> I could have grabbed the book. Um, I love and hate the book. What I love about the book is that it goes through the qualities of God. What I don't like about the book is that it doesn't use the best translations. So when I taught the class, uh, what I did was, yeah, we read the book, but then I would bring in other source material to read the same thing. There were different transla translations that I thought did a better job of translating it. Um, but one of the qualities of God that we uh, talked about, and it was the gr it was from the Greek, was um, beauty. When you look at uh, the Greek and the Roman styles, the Greek and the Roman styles are very similar. The difference between the Greek and the Romans is that the Greeks idealized their statues. 
uh, and the Romans didn't. Uh, so it's interesting to look at, and I think I've read that somewhere in there that the Greeks acknowledged that they, when they, when they created their statues, that they were going for perfection, not reality. Um, and you might consider it, they were going back to God's idea. Um, and the, the Romans, yeah, <laughs> go look at Greek and Roman statues. Um, so when, um, when the Greeks were, the, so that's why when we look at the idea of beauty, we look at the Greeks because they were idealizing. Um, nobody looks like the statues that the Greeks made. Um, not even the Greeks. So, and that's, I think that's what Ernest is saying in, in the passage today. It's like, if you want to get there, the secret high of the most, uh, the secret place of the most high. If you want to get there, then you want to focus on um, the highest idea that you can. And honestly, it's all around you. And it doesn't have to be physical perfection. Um, although remember that the word perfection means whole. Uh, that's one of the reasons why um, nature meditations work so well. Because nature has this beauty to it that we... can't quite grasp um we can't i mean there are painters who are extraordinarily talented but seeing the picture and being in the place are different um photography is the same way and i think that's one of the things that i like about photography it's like i'm always trying to capture that perfect moment i never quite make it I have taken beautiful photographs. I have seen beautiful photographs, but it, it's not quite like being there. So it's like we're striving for, I'll give you an example, um, the light filtering through clouds when you can see the rays of light. I have an idea. I have an idea of what that looks like. Perfect. Could I describe it to you? No. Could I paint it? Absolutely not. Um, Have I taken it? No. Have I seen it? Maybe. But I know what it looks like. And that is, that is, that is that perfection and that wholeness that I'm looking for. And that is how I get there. So when I contemplate the presence, nature is a good way to do it. Music is a great way to do it. Um, Staring into the candle flame or staring into a fire is good um, because it takes your mind away from, and I'm going to say the mundane. That's one of the reasons why they encourage us to close our eyes because we can look at the perfection in our minds. So God's idea, the bliss body, the, um, uh, okay. And pray without ceasing. People have this idea about pray without ceasing. And it's like we're constantly praying. Yes, but not the way you think. Pray without ceasing really comes back to your, the thoughts, your default thoughts. Think about your default thoughts. Um, when you... What are you thinking about when you're not thinking? Like, what is the undercurrent of your mind? Because the truth is your thoughts are always creative. And the more emotion you put behind your thought, the more creative your thoughts are. Are, you, are your undercurrent thoughts positive or negative? And if they're more negative than positive, surround yourself with beauty. And your thoughts will tend to be, and not my idea of beauty, your idea of beauty, whatever it looks like to you, be it nature, be it ultra modern, be whatever, you know, um, 
then uh, it will help to shift your undercurrent of thoughts. So make take a look at your environment around you and add little things to your environment as you can to make to, to, to make it more pu more um, beautiful to you more positive to you more comforting to you your undercurrent thoughts will shift accordingly and then you will pray without ceasing because you're praying without ceasing anyway but you will pray in a more positive manner if that makes sense that's one of the things that it, it occurred to me it's like when I think of you whoever you are um, I want to think of you as happy healthy and whole because when I think of you I'm praying for you I don't want to think of I don't want to think of your troubles I want to think of your um, your wins because when I when I think of you I'm praying about you I'm seeing you it's not that I don't want to know when you are struggling I do want to know when you are struggling because then when I think about you I'm going to think about you winning it's like yes I know that this is the situation that you are currently experiencing but it's not who you are I'm gonna know who you are I'm gonna know that you're a beloved child of God I'm going to pray without ceasing just by thinking about you and I'm gonna think about you in a positive way and myself and that's what I mean by pray without ceasing it's like are your thoughts more positive than negative because you are always praying it doesn't matter what we call it so long as we remember that there is a secret place of the Most High which by the way is in quotes so he's quoting from somewhere uh, within us and that we may consciously enter it merely by knowing that we are already there um, and that's that faith it's like I'll believe it when I see it mm, you'll see it when you believe it so when you acknowledge God or spirit or whatever quantum field whatever word you want to use um, then you're there and that's all it takes it's literally a threshold literally a threshold uh, there is this place where there where the universe meets us in its wholeness without any restrictions whatsoever this is the place where the all delivers everything that it is to us and so Jesse talks about uh, that place within us um, where we go to meet God I call it that unfiltered place where you meet uh, and it's where we go uh, to forget the material it's where we let the material noise get out of our way and meet God so then the next thing he says anything that helps you enter the here is good if you say prayers make affirmations repeat beautiful passages or sit in quiet contemplation of your thought realizing the presence listening to music running um, hiking to some degree driving as long as you do it safely um, you know riding petting your uh, companion animal in my case cat but dog um, guinea pig whatever whatever brings you to that contentment for a moment for all these methods lead to the conclusion that the power exists and is available it really is about feeling so whatever it is that gets you to that feeling if it is cooking if it is eating what you cooked if it is um, listening to the birds sing anything all life all health all love all peace exist in this power our loneliness our sense of isolation our poverty our doubt and our sickness are results of being disconnected in consciousness from this divine help we are not disconnected we've just kinked the hose we cannot disconnect but we can create the illusion that we are disconnecting and that goes back to the pray without ceasing 
are your thoughts more negative or positive? And do not get me wrong, there are straight up brain chemicals that affect this. Um, I will, I know because I spent two years on an antidepressant and what drove me into uh, the, the antidepressant was the thoughts in my head. When I heard myself talk and I went, this isn't right. This is not right. And I went to the doctor and I had the conversation with the doctor and I got the medication and my self-talk changed. So there is no shame. Ernest says it. Um, everything under the sun, including the pills, are uh, created by God. So if you, if you realize that your self-talk is beyond changing little things in your environment, then please go speak to a medical professional. Do what you need to do because this is an organ. And when it does not function, it is just as legitimate to take a pill to support that brain chemistry as it is to wear glasses. And if you need it for a short time, just to reset your brain chemistry, that's great. Um, I was one of those, but I also know that I have to manage it by diet and exercise and all of that. But, you know, there's no shame in taking it long term. This is an organ. Just like your hands and your eyes and your heart. And so... If you need the support to manage that, because it will help you get to that place, then please do that. Please do that. Unkink your hose. Unkink your hose. <laughs> Speak to your medical professionals. All right. Um, and let go of that illusion of the disconnection. I let go of every inharmonious inharmonious limiting thought. I quietly turn within and acknowledge the inner presence of my own being. Beautiful, uplifting feelings of harmony, peace, and love flow through me like a river, elevating my consciousness to a new and higher level of acceptance and unity. And honestly, any safe way to get there is legitimate. So, supporting your, changing your environment, listening to beautiful music, going for a hike, going for a run, going to a park, um, being with a person chanting, whatever it takes to find that place within yourself. And if you find that you cannot get there, and you find that your undercurrent is not, um, healthy. I like to call it a default setting. Can you tell I was raised by an engineer? When you find your default setting isn't quite there, then speak to a professional, you know, that your practitioners are available for that. Um, and then you speak to a medical professional. Um, I am a poster child for the medications. <laughs> it, it helped. It helped. And what I will, I, what I will tell you is that the drugs didn't make me happy, but they quieted the noise so that I could remember what happy felt like. And then when I remembered what happy felt like, then I was able to maintain it. So, um, yeah, the medications. Oh, so, um, unkink your hose, find your bliss body. Our mission today, should we choose to accept it, is <laughs> to consciously enter it, that place, that secret place of the Most High, by knowing that we are already there. So it is about looking around us and seeing the place of the Mo Most High around us. I, I like to say, uh, and he said it last in in. The later months and I forget when it was um, to allow that breath of heaven to remind us that we're in heaven now so if we can look around and see a glimpse of that heaven once we've seen it it's easier to see it the next time and the next time and the, it's easier to hold it and then 
at some point, we live in heaven more often than we don't. And that's what we're looking for. Ah, by focusing on the qualities of God. All right. Um, this is what happens when I'm not awake. <laughs> I ramble. So hopefully you got something out of it today. And I am going to go and do what I need to do to wake up. Because we have a service coming at 11. Um, but before that, I'm going to remind you to do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Every day. Because you are a beloved child of God in whom spirit is well pleased always and forever. This is the state of grace that we live in. But it is up to us to recognize it. It is up to us to recognize it and live as if. Because when we live as if, we are creating our own reality. We are praying without ceasing. All right, beloveds. So, like I said, right here on Facebook Live, we have that 11 service. Reverend David will be on with you around 5 p.m. today, and I will be back with you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. All right, beloveds, do what you need to do to make it a wonderful day. Um, it's beautiful out there. Go get some sunshine on your face. Get some fresh air. Get that uh, fresh perspective. Do something to engage your mind and your body. All right, drink some water. It's extra important to drink water during the winter because we don't realize we're as thirsty during the winter as we are during the summer because we sweat it in the summer. Yet we have our heat running in the winter and it dehydrates us. So, all right, beloveds. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>